Hello and welcome to the Need Says podcast. Today's guest, we have not only a big inspiration, but I'm lucky to say that it's my best friend, Siobhan O'Hagan. Yes, Hi, Siobhan. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I know. I miss you. I know. We really miss each other right now. And um, so this is like, like we're gonna, probably going to cry after this, but I don't, you know, the whole thing where you have to say, oh, say something about yourself. Yeah. It doesn't matter about me. <laughs> what do you mean? And I hate telling that story. Can I say it? You know what? I'm going to say it. That's what I mean. Cause I hate it and I'm trying to find new ways <laughs> to do it, but obviously you have to do it, but I'm just going to say it because I'm going to describe you. Okay. So Siobhan is my biggest role model in life just because not only does she have her own business, but she taught everyone that you don't have to go do the society norms. You can literally just live the way you want to live if you work at it. And she taught me how to work, make a business. And she just taught me that like, I don't have to do the same as everyone else. And she also helps loads and loads of women around the world be comfortable in their body and teaches them how to lose weight appropriately, how to look after their body and feed their bodies with nutrients all day long. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I know. Can I say everything you do? <laughs> and what the hell do I do? You've taught me how to be a better person all around. And, lo- and not only me, and then to people you've you know, got thinking differently and being kinder to other people. And it's, yeah, it's refreshing. Oh my God, you're so cute. We're going to cry. Oh my God, we're going to be so mushy. We're like drunken boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, when, on a night out. <laughs> oh my God, we should have drank. Oh my oh, God. It's too, it's too early there. <laughs> I fucking would. I wouldn't care. <laughs> I literally am like I'm in lockdown anything that goes picture right? you put a us at us asking for questions like that's us drinking at 9am no well, that wasn't that oh yeah that was that one 9am that, that was the funnest day ever but we will talk about our memories in a minute but I want to get into the actual reason why you're here because everyone wants to know and everyone wants to cut past this whole stigma of settling down being married having a house having kids in like what late 20s early 30s this is like a this is the norm over here in Ireland if you're not from Ireland I, then. Like I, I could be wrong but I feel like up the north it's a li- little bit younger that people settle yeah like all my friends, friends are all married. married and like I didn't know anyone that was married when I was your age yeah all my friends are married or kids so are getting married apart from like my hometown they're just crazy but um whereas my friends are now getting married but they would be a little bit older like they're in their 30s and they're all getting yeah. married and I'm still like we're too young for this. I'm like, uh, get pregnant? Like, do you know what's causing it? Or? <laughs> I know. And you know what? People are like, all oh, my friends are settling down. And I am like the complete opposite. I am like absolutely petrified of it. I don't know about you, but I, I actually am like sort of petrified to settle down. Like not, it's, it's, you know what? When I talk about this, I don't like to talk about settling down because I still feel like you can be with someone and you can be free and you don't have to settle. Yes, I yes. Like I had a, I actually had an email the other day from a girl who was saying how, like, she's married and they have a house, but she has, and, like, she was dealing with the stigma of, like, she didn't go for a promotion or she she took, she cut back on her hours because she wants to be at home with her kids. And she's like, I'm so glad I took that decision, didn't listen to anyone else because now I have the freedom to spend time with my kids at the weekend, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I was like, that's it. Like, that, when I talk about, when I say like never settle it's not that I mean don't get married or don't get a house it means like don't settle for less than what you actually want yeah you know like it's I think it's only when you step away from I think it's when you travel especially and you see some people living very different lives that you're like oh okay I'm not that weird because I'm not married by 30 or that I've no aspirations to get a mortgage or you know it's it's I kind of try and share that message that I've learned over the years. And I suppose I've kind of, by doing, by making all these decisions, it's made me so happy. So I just wanted to kind of show that it is possible to be happy without being married and having kids and having a mortgage. Um, but yeah. I'm not saying having a kid, having yeah. a house or kids or mortgage, you can't be happy because, yeah. you know, my friends that are getting married and having babies, they are really happy and I can be happy for them. But I think we just need more people showing, we need more kind of, yeah. I suppose, people online showing that you can be happy in your 30s and single. Basically, whatever the hell 30s. you want, whatever the hell you want, you can do. If you want to settle and get married, then 100%. But if you don't want to, then do not feel the pressure. Like me and you are good examples of that. I know I'm 28 and you're 30. What are you doing? Remember the blooms. <laughs> so um, 
like I'm like I'm like the opposite like I find it really hard to bring someone into my life because I'm so obsessed with my own time <laughs> like I'm just well, I love my own time with you share you've shared your a lot of time with a lot of people recently in the last year compared what? to me now that's just what saying. do you mean I mean you I've had different boyfriends yeah no this year I've only had oh yeah two <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not too bad okay I know I've had a lot of relationships I think we both know that um we always talk about me and you that you've had the one crazy relationship like you had one really yeah. intense not crazy but one that actually intense. yeah worth noting it's like another life but, for me to see you in that in that other relationship do you know what I mean like I know because I'm so pictures. comfortable by myself like I could not imagine sharing my bed with someone all the time like yes Oh, or my time you know like my morning routine like I literally even if like a friend was staying with me or something I'm like oh my time and I think that's why we always live so well together because we're able to like yeah know, we do what we both do. know we do our morning routines we both know we do yeah. our things separately um but yeah I can't imagine and like I'm not closed off to the idea either but like it's just I'm, I'm not going out looking for it I think you know because I, I, I compare it to a lot of people I know uh, especially my age, who are actively searching for a partner because, and, and probably because of the, their age, society, you know, where, where they think they need to be at that time. But also, I suppose, as you're getting older, and if you do want kids, you know, there is this pressure to meet someone. And I think I'm lucky that I don't want kids because like, you can't turn that off. Yeah. And like, I do feel sorry for, I suppose, people that are older than me, even that are you know, still searching for the one. And it's just so hard in this day or these years of like trying to find someone, trying to date. Like, I can, I can imagine people will settle for less than they deserve. Yeah. And I think what I want to talk about is the fact that it was also in the question boxes as well. People were saying like, they need someone to make them happy. Whilst me and you have done so much self-development that like, we make ourselves happy and full and complete by ourselves yeah yeah so, and that's it, so it's very it's very hard <laughs> for someone to come in because we don't need their validation and their partnership to make us feel happy but, yeah, but we might be go- have gone too far the other end you know the way you always say like no, make sure you know that you love yourself first and then you know you, you can't find your other half if you're only a half a person but now I feel and that's what I felt like when I was first like property single when I was like 20, I, I felt like half of me I was only half a person. It took me so long to build that back up till I was so happy, live my own life, completely independent. You know, no one can make me be that sad again. That yeah. I'm so hesitant to let anyone in. I have already told you this, that you're an avoidant, but you barely listened to me. Like that, 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 first, that first relationship did hurt you. Like that was painful for you. And it was a long-term relationship. And you were living with someone. And, you know, I seen the photos, like you spent... New Year's Eve, like loving and you know what I mean? Like you were, I I've been in that relationship as well where you just never even go out. Like you just want to sit in yeah, yeah. and you know, know. that's like, sit now. I'm sat with my friends, like you're coming out. I'm like, no, we're getting old now, you know, don't really go out as much. Like I was twenty five. Now yeah. I'm going out as much like ten times as much I'm thirty two. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, but I mean I think I, I definitely don't want that life again. Like it de- you know if that's what I, maybe that's what I picture a relationship as. And I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, okay. um, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense that you fear that you're going to be like that settled down, but you can still be free as well. If anyone's listening to this, you can still be free and have a partner. Like you can literally make your own rules. Like you can have a partner. You can even be pregnant and have a baby and be traveling. Like there is no rules about it. So don't think like when you get with someone that you have to like go and get a house straight away. Like, there is other options and you can do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. I mean, I meet loads of couples that are traveling as well and they're happy and they're, you know, I think it's just, I, because I'm normally on the move so much as well. Um, you know, like I normally don't stay anywhere for longer than like a month or two. So I'm not like, oh, I'm going to go dating or anything. You know, I'm just never really bothered. Yeah. Um, now that I'm here for a while, I'm like, oh, maybe I should start going. I, I'm yeah, thinking with Bali as well because normally... Well, you'll be jealous. Yes. You have a boyfriend. <laughs> okay, right. The thing is, right. 
Like people are asking. Hi, Jack, if you're listening. <laughs> Jack doesn't even listen to my podcast. Like I can't even cope. Uh, literally the whole podcast is about him. He just doesn't even listen, but which is probably a good thing. But um, people are asking me like, what do you think of Jack? And what do you think of me and Jack? Oh, me yeah they want to they want to know what you think that I love seeing you happy um but I'm like you know he's just keeping you warm until you come back to me <laughs> I know people like this is a question as well because I mean I've never been asked a question more in my entire life you know is Jack gonna come with you is I like, had some random Indonesian woman ask me but like she was like I was like oh my friend is coming out and she's like your friend and I was like Sinead and she was like oh I follow her and I was like oh no way yeah she's coming out next week and she was like oh, what about Jack and I was just so <laughs> shocked because this is the woman who I buy cookies off I was like you, oh, no. you follow Sinead um and yeah so she's she also wants to know what about Jack yeah so I'll just talk about it here because I just find first of all I think it's a really personal question for people to ask me when we're first like we're going out like it's such a serious conversation to have with Jack and everyone like wants to know and I'm like okay I'm, I think I would talk to Jack before I need to you know talk to you um but as people are like do you think having Jack is stopping you from moving away and it's a hundred percent no like he would he would never stop me from mm. going away well I mean you could have come out earlier but you're like no I, just, I wanted I want to spend Christmas, Christmas which is like obviously fucked up but at the same time I'm just accepting it right now because I actually felt like shit over Christmas and I'm just like getting into the swing of things now and I just think like if I would have felt like shit going to Bali and um, but he could have been here before Christmas yeah I know I know but anyway but so you, like maybe he stopped thing, me like, for a little while keeping you there but maybe he stopped me for a little while yes but um I think like if I wasn't to go he would be coming back to like a big sad face every day like oh look at everyone away so I actually think you can do both and everyone everyone's like oh if you leave you and Jack are gonna finish and da, da, da. and I'm like no it doesn't have to happen like that you can make up your own yeah that's rules. like putting labels on things you know like you know that you're gonna see him again and yeah like he lives down the road happens, like happens. Yeah. <laughs> and I always think this right um first of all he's finished and he's finished in June so we can fi- we can we can always figure out a way if we still like are so mad about each other and I just think like if I left and he decided maybe he wanted to be single and go with other people then like he is not the man for me so I have to just let everything run its course like if we're apart and we're like oh my god like we're meant to be then we'll figure out a way so that's to answer everyone's question there <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and hopefully Siobhan will like Jack because it's, I think me and Siobhan just come as a two and um, <laughs> I think it's weird all right. <laughs> I was telling her yesterday I was like you know that we are twin flames and she was like what the hell's a twin flame and I was like well basically like it's like a boy and a girl usually but I think it's actually us like I oh, think it's like, normally a couple like so basically it's a couple it's normally a couple who just constantly come back and gravitate to each other and have this really fiery like sort of relationship but you're kind of telepathic in in this so you kind of know what they're thinking so I know when you're having a bad day you know when I'm having a bad day and stuff like that but I want to touch on our friendship because that's like another question that everyone wanted to know about our friendship um maybe how we met first (laughs) so how did we meet I stalked you I don't care like I'm not ashamed of it like I followed Siobhan she was like (gasps) shit sorry um I thought <laughs> what a pro <laughs> I know um I followed Siobhan for eight close, and I like manifested it sort of and oh, it just so happened it sounds like I was actually stalking her but it so happened we were in Thailand at the same time and we just met up and I could tell there was a she is used to being by herself she doesn't really have like it's hard to understand what did I do did I try avoid you (laughs) no 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 like we like we were really good friends but then like you were like okay bye I'm going to bed right all the time and I was like okay right and you would never have like anyone in your room or anything like that and um now I think I'm the only person like I've ever met in the last four years has like allowed to be be in your space and like be really really in your space and I think that's because I crawled my way in by just like I don't know. I think we accept each other very much as well. Like the yeah, because we're-, we're so different. Like we're oh. we're actually really different. Like I think people are like, "Why are you friends with Siobhan?" Because <laughs> um, I just seem like shy crack compared to you. But <laughs> I think we both we ha- we. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why you're friends with me, but like you just. I just think you taught me a lot about life and like how to 
be a good person and like just in every situation like you're almost annoying with the way you turn everything so positive you know you're like everything I'm like just let me be pissed off at her or let me just you know <laughs> gossip and you'd be like no Siobhan what does that say about us and I'm like oh <laughs> like, but at the same time then you're really fun and you know we just have such a laugh together as well um so yeah then we just kept kind of bumping into each other around the world then I went to Australia and you just come back from the farm and we had such a laugh there and then we just kept hanging out yeah. then you came to Bali stayed in my new villa I don't know when that was though yeah and like there's a like there's a study as well that I say that I always talk about the baby that cries them or the parent that tends to the child that cries that is where the attachment is so so strong you know like this parent that tends and like you know if something goes wrong or I'm in a bad state or something happens like I call you and vice versa you call me and those are the ways to make yourself closer to someone and that's what I always say to people as well if they want to build better friendships you need to get the nitty-gritty out you need to ask some really deep questions you know like what happens yeah, in relationships yeah. you know and once you share all those hardships together it just builds you so close and then you've got that trust trust bond like if I called I think that I could call you in the middle of the night and say Siobhan as like I need like 20,000 pound right now like and yeah you that answer. Oh. and you would be like yeah I, yeah, like, yeah. If, and if, I if, like, if I was awake <laughs> yeah and I would be like yeah as well so you know yeah. like that's the kind of bond that people need to have where you can call someone in the middle of the night and be like I need a favor no questions asked and that there's the kind yeah. of friend that we have so, I was thinking about this today as a kind of a side note but about like how to build a friendship or when when you start kind of like trusting someone and I was thinking like there's so much especially you get this a lot in body like inauthenticity where people are like hey babe oh great to see you. we should hang out and I think I'm just a really skeptical person as well and I'd be like what babe what we should hang out like what do you want from me you know I, I'm really I nearly become standoffish when someone is overly nice um and like there's someone I know who's like always been like really really nice since the day I met them and which kind of made me almost like not like them you know like you're just like oh why is he like that or and then <laughs> then he mentioned something just when he was in a bad mood like he, he just it just became a lot more raw and vulnerable yeah. you know when something's gone wrong for me kind of said it and I was like oh, and he was giving out about something and I was like now I see the real you like now I see you sharing a problem and not just being fake and I'm like that's when you kind of can start to get to know someone when they're not like inauthenticity I realized is something that I can't stand yeah um we have that so I really well. think with someone say that again? do you remember we were like I'm, I like everyone, you know me, but then there's some people I'm like, say like there was this one person we were like, why is it really hard to be around this person? Like what? And we were trying to be really nice because like that person was really nice. And oh, then I, I just, I wish I knew who you're talking about. <laughs> you do. And um, I just went, oh my God, I've got it. It's complete unauthentic. Everything is not, her, not her. And you were like, yes. You're like trying to remember. I can't remember who it is. But anyway, and then I was like, that is why it's so hard to be around someone sometimes because they're not true their true selves. So another tip for making friends is to yeah. be yourself. Like be yourself from the start. Yeah. Like, don't pretend everything's amazing and that you love someone. And you know, like that I mean, we I think we're pretty good at that at telling you, you know, saying what annoys us and what uh how we can be better and all that. Mm -hmm. Um we're like mm -hmm, let's not bring that up <laughs> let's not fight yeah, but to be fair like if we are gonna we are gonna bring we're not gonna bring up the when we fight but we fight differently so what I've noticed between me and you and the difference between like me and my mom so I'll be really annoyed at my mom but I feel like I can't say anything because she's always right and then we can sometimes become really emotionally distant and next thing we're not even having a conversation about anything and that is that distance is kind of like where your family can just go stale in a way and your relationship can just go flat. But if you bring things to the surface and deal with them, so if me, if you're annoyed with me and I'm annoyed with you, for, of course we're going to be annoyed at each other at some point. So we're two yeah, but we really talk it out. Like. We'll be like, okay, what can we do to do this better? And even living with you, we did that together. We had like maybe once a week, we were like, right, what can we do this week that makes us better together? And like now it's almost like 
we basically should just get married be because like, it's shorter. It just makes me feel like this. You know, it wouldn't, you'd be like, this is yeah. how I feel when you do this. And this makes me feel like this when you do this. And we're like, okay, let's not do that. Yeah. And then we go away, we journal and then we come back and then we're like, closer than we've ever been because we've kind yeah, of yeah. worked through that and I actually did this to my mom the other day and um, so at the start when I came back I was all you know my head was all psychology and blah, blah blah so I was like the relationship was so good and then we started to get distant again and distant and she was doing things that were annoying me and I was just like not saying anything because I was just like oh so then the other day this will happen so obviously you've got loads of chocolates for Christmas and she goes oh. so I had some dairy milk that wasn't opened. I was like, oh, dairy milk, yum. Somebody bought me these. Started eating the dairy milk and she flipped. She was like, why would you eat the dairy milk? I was going to give that as a present to someone. Now, like I eat all the other chocolates, so I wouldn't eat the dairy milk. So I was, she started actually going mad at me and I was like, what the hell? And then I was like, mom, you went upstairs into my drawers and took my LMD new makeup that I hadn't even talked about. You literally took it out of the packet. So, oh, that's different. And I was like, no, it's not. It is not different. You cannot go up to my room and take stuff that I haven't even blogged about. And she's team Mo. And then me and oh, no. <laughs> and then me and her like almost went cold. And I was almost about to leave and really be really annoyed. But then I goes, Mom, let's sit and talk about this. Let's sit and talk about this. I was like, right, I think we maybe are both in the wrong. I was like, I didn't know that you weren't allowed to open the I wasn't allowed to open the chocolates. I open every other chocolates. So you need to state what chocolates I'm not allowed to have. And you need to ask me when you want LMD lip gloss. So that's how it worked. Anyway, we could, and that, that's, it's something so small, but it's a way. Yeah, no, talking about things and talking about what, and, and not just, I think, oh, like conflict is something I love talking about and love helping people with because it's all about, you know, thinking about what their point of view is and actually speaking about how like their behavior makes you feel rather than like what they're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, like I always say that it's like, you know, I was like, that's pretty, I can't think of a fight. <laughs> like, you know, like I feel like you don't care about me because you do this. You know, like it's it's all about me. You know, f- my feelings. Um, and then people are like, oh, I didn't realize that I was making you feel like that. You know, and, yeah. and if it's a, and if it's not a, a heated conversation, they won't get defensive because you know when you bring the heat to a conversation, the autom- you want to defend. You want to you know even if you know you're in the wrong, you're going to just get defensive about something else because if if the conversation is like that, so I always say like, bring it back, be really calm, don't be sarcastic, you can be tempting to get digs in all the time, <laughs> and it's like just be sound, talk about what's wrong, and. It's like it, it, it's just the only way to resolve it because otherwise you know the natural human thing is to want to get one over on someone so it's like just okay. you know leave the ego out yes um so the next thing people wanted to know was some memories that maybe people don't know about between me and you I might need you might need a little minute to think about those I don't know we both put our full lives our online especially when we're together <laughs> We do not put our full legs online. Let's be real. Let's <laughs> uh, tell them about the routine. I know. So this was the question someone asked. They were like, "This is somebody actually asked us, who is kinkier between me and you? You. But now you. <laughs> me. Well, you know, you're rubbing off. You, you, know, know, you know, I know the routine. You yeah. have all my moves. I think half of Dublin know the routine now from you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the girls I mean the girls that you've shown oh yeah the girls okay so basically right um we're not gonna tell the routine oh yeah we're not gonna tell the routine no way that's a secret that's a workshop in itself if you want to come it's a 20 pound a ticket (laughs) (laughs) so basically right I get a good I get a good review here and there I get a good review and um some of the girls are like what how do they say that like blah blah and I was like "It's, it's a routine it is a routine. So it's about nine different positions. If they make the ninth, then God. And I taught nine. it. And I taught it. I think it's nine or eight or nine. I taught it to Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> My left view. I don't even know how we came back. We must have been drunk one night. And I was like, oh, it's a routine. And then I, and you were like, show me it. Two of us in lockdown drinking wine, playing songs on the hurls. <laughs> I know. And then I taught Siobhan. I was like, this is how it goes. da there's a few things involved but um <laughs> and then we finally got out of lockdown and you got to use it 
you're dying. I got a five star review. <laughs> Jokes. You got a five star review and got hounded for by this person, and I was like, Siobhan, hands down, it's a fucking routine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, coming soon to a workshop near you. Sinead says, do the routine. Sinead says the routine. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I see. I've learned so much from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now um, people are asking us out, like, what have you learned from each other? And um, we did touch on it as well, but I taught. Siobhan taught me discipline and obedience due to like I would just be hanging about with her like I mean we're traveling like and we're you know roaming around and she's like I have to go I have to work I have to work I have to work and I used to be like oh my god why do you have to work all the time and then it made me realize on um, that I need to put boundaries on if I want to do what she's doing so I now do the exact same thing as her like I literally model all her behaviors and stuff like that it, you know you can be like someone if you model their behaviors so what does she do she reads information she does yoga she <laughs> does all those things and I'm just like okay now I need to add these into my life if I want to be as successful as her and I had but to I do it all in the mornings after that I don't do anything you know like it's kind of like if yeah. I don't get it done in my morning routine it's just not happening for the rest of the day yeah Which but like annoying I have to well. get up really early here to get everything done yeah but worth that ethic I mean there was times where I was working by myself and people would ask me to do this and that. And I'd be like, yeah, you know, I work for myself, like whatever. And then you taught me to put the boundaries in. Like, you know, if you want to be successful, you need to be like, no, I know I work for myself and I can go for that coffee with you. But right now this is my work hours and no, I can't see you. So that is what you I wrote the book eventually. <laughs> oh yeah. That book as well. That's a different, that's boundaries and relationships. That's another fucking level. But um, yeah, so that is something that, you know, really, really inspired me and you know that's being really cute isn't it well what I learned from Sinead I keep saying it but like yeah. you've taught me you know like obviously we both study human nature and or the like the laws of human nature and just like human behavior in general I think we've both just been so interested in the mind and psychology and um and, and I, you're I think you touched on it earlier saying oh that's such a podcast thing to say you touched on it earlier <laughs> um, but, um, but you were saying about you know like you'll just be like to everyone like hey come be my friend I'll trust everyone and I think I'd be a bit more like, oh, right yeah closed I think but then you kind of taught me that like that's how you make friends like that's how and I've, I've always I always think the best of someone like I'd always when I meet someone I'd, I'd think the best of them until they do something to annoy me like I know there's a lot of people out there who just don't like anyone until yeah. they're they're nice to them but I just think you've you're just overly nice like I don't I wouldn't say too nice I mean literally overly nice to people and you can just see like you give so much of yourself like you had me doing my dms every day because you were doing them like I used to think oh I can't keep up with all these messages and you would be on the treadmill every day <laughs> just been like I need to write back to all these girls they're sending me their problems and and I think, and I did the same for a long time, like just yeah. made sure I got all the messages done. But then I think we both, um, I think we My both kind of realized totally it was stop. draining us. Yeah. Like it was too much to take on. Like I kind of felt guilty if I didn't do it and then felt bad kind of like it was frustrating me a lot, um, trying to get through them. But you know, that kind of whole like give, 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 give just as like, and it'll come back to you. Like that's yeah. definitely something I've learned from you and it's definitely, come back to me like, I think we've both been like especially like with our attitudes to money like you've taught me you know like you always say like when you're broke and everything and like it just shows like I've, I've my whole journey here like I've not been money driven at all mm -hmm. you know I've just been like do the right thing follow your morals like just follow your passions put in the work and it'll come to you in some way like I've I've always done that with, with like training and you know you see people being really cutthroat online or being really like insta hungry and money hungry and you know I think they will get success you know maybe in the short term but I just think long term it doesn't it doesn't work and you know we've learned like to say no to to like influencer things like I know you're talking about not doing any yeah any so I said no to mostly every job that I usually have this year just well I told everyone I'm having a two-month break um, in case I break <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. well there is some that were like no you need a year contract so I'm just definitely like no like you know like the tan makeup everything like that is kind of gone for me now and I just really needed to cut the ships um, and do what I loved I want to do more about books reading self-development I want to study more I want to write more books 
Um, I also really love this podcast and I didn't know I could make money from it, but yesterday I found out that I could. I was oh, like, really? what? Oh my God, nearly died. So I just like, somebody messaged me, you know, the person that works with Blind Boy? Um, I know, I'm so excited because um, I love Blind Boy podcast. Listen to it if you haven't. And oh, they, well, you didn't listen to I'm Grandmam podcast. Oh, I started listening to I'm Grandmam as well yesterday. Oh my God, I'm- Oh my god! Oh, I'm only it's on my so episode funny. one, so yeah, I thought it was so funny, and it's like good inspo as well because it's a good, it's just a bit of crack, and I kind of want mine to be a yeah, bit yeah, as well. I know because yeah. all, all of the podcasts I've listened to, it's always that learning and like you yeah. know kind of serious stuff, and then that one, I'm like, it's just lighthearted. Like I put it on while I'm just you know doing bits, and yeah, it's brilliant. You just need a bit of crack, and I love James and all. I love their podcast because they're just yeah. like having chit chat as well, and that's kind of yeah, what it's I like want. listening to your mates having a chat. Yeah, I just wanted that. But um, yeah, I said no to a lot of things. Like I said no to a lot of money because for me, it's not about the money at all. It's about being true to myself. And I actually think- But then come- by doing that, the money will come to you in other ways. Yeah, I think it will. And not I, I Matthew McConaughey's book, um, he says, he said, no, basically, right. It was like 8 million for a rom-com. And he was like, no, I want to be serious. And he's like, no, kept saying no. And then they came back and it was like 50 million or something crazy like that. And he yeah. still said no. And then like it came back to him in some way. So I just felt like, I just want to do this for now and see how I get on. And Jack was like, no, you're the breadwinner. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I think like, oh, okay. bye, honey. But yeah, no, I'm like, I think that's good. Like me and you're very, we're not really money driven. And I try to get everyone's why out of them as well. Um, I, Cause you were like, and I really got your why out of you because I was like, you're basically like with your business, um, you're training people that were in your position, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know I what I mean? And they needed you. And they who were needed. like me. Yeah. Be like I mean, me now, my relationship with food and, and stuff now because it, it was so, yeah. And like that's, and that's what, kind of by sticking with that and, st- and not kind of taking on everyone, but just sticking with my experience and, and trying to help as many people as I can yeah it's just worked out like and now I'm getting the most amazing reviews and I'm so happy like I just yeah. I can't believe that it's working like I think because I had so much self-doubt as well but now that I see these reviews coming in and you know I don't feel like I'm doing nothing too special either but I'm like I'm just I'm just yeah it's got just yeah. all going really well at the moment and I don't know like you know everyone's always like well, what about when Instagram dies and you know I'm really just like I I'm flexible like I'll do something I you know, I have no fear. I will work back in the bar. I will work anywhere. I yeah, don't care. I like, really want to work in a coffee shop because I, I, I think I, I want to have a coffee shop eventually. Um, but not even because I want like a successful business. I just want somewhere where people can bring dogs and laptops and talk to people and, you know, serve good coffee. And I'm like, that would be the dream. Like if I could just live my, the rest of my days, just hanging out in a coffee shop, meeting people. Yeah. Like, but I've told you about that. My dream kind of like is like yours and we could just oh, join yeah, them yeah. together. So yeah. one of my dreams is called the Saigal Sanctuary. So basically it's just going to be like a space where women come. First of all, there's going to be a coffee shop on the side with Froyo. You know how I feel about Froyo. So that could be like your part. I have Froyo and gelato because some people just don't like Froyo because it's basically just yogurt and everyone just likes the toppings. Yeah, I love it anyway. But anyway, so that would be like one side, right? And people come there to make friends because in Australia, I just struggled a lot because I didn't know how to make friends. So it's going to be like meditation. People come to talk. There's going to be counselors there. There's going to be just somewhere, a safe space for people to come in. Yoga, very mindfulness. And I can just imagine myself getting up every day, getting my coffee at 6am, going down to the beach and then like going to my, open my doors because like, I'll go and open the doors and I'll be like, hi guys, morning meditation. And I just think like, oh. that was as all that I would need, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that'll work for me. I think I'm too old to go to straight Australia now. So I'll come so visit we you. Can, we can um, franchise. In Bali. <laughs> Do it in Bali as well. <laughs> I know. Um, okay. So the last thing that I'm going to talk about, because I like to keep them short and sweet. I feel like we haven't actually talked about anything yet. I feel like we're just having a chat. <laughs> Yeah, no, but that's what I want it to be. Like, I don't want it to be really serious. I want it to be a wee bit of crack. Like, I want people to be in their earphones laughing and listening. But I'm like, oh my God, I've lost my page here where I had these questions for you. And I'm like, where did it go? <laughs> well, I just talk about things in between. Oh, okay. So basically, oh yeah. It was that- <laughs> <laughs> so it was basically like what we were talking about. And then we just went off course. So basically people are asking about how the hell do you find your passion and your purpose? And what you were saying there before about like 
basically training someone like yourself is that you are an expert of experience because you have been in their, that person's shoes. And that's the same as me. I feel like what, I'm experience and fucking break heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> but also what I'd say is that I think there is a lot of pressure for, to, for, for people to feel like they have to be making money for, from their passion. Or I'm a big fan of just figuring out how much money you need to do what you want to do day to day and making it whatever way you need to. So, you know, there's so many ways to make money online. Like, and you see that out here when people are just like maybe managing a social media for someone or teaching English to kids online or there's, there's so many ways. And I, so I always tell people to find their number, like how much money they need to live the life they want to live. Um, and for me, like I did that back when I was doing personal training, I was like, like I was working so many hours and I was making money, but you know, that something didn't feel right. And I was like, I think I'm working too much. So I figured out how much money I needed. And it's easier when you're getting paid per hour. You know, I was able to then say, okay, that's how much money I need to cover. Like, and not just like basics, but like to actually, you know, have a few drinks the weekend or, you know, go for dinner or whatever. Um, and then work backwards. It was like, okay, well then I actually only have to work say 20 hours. And that gave me you know, that opened up another 20 hours that I used to, you know, start reading and training myself and building my online business. You know, so I always say like, I think that there's so much pressure on having a career ladder in Ireland, especially that you don't consider just working enough to fulfill, like to then maybe do your passion on the side or maybe to, you know, have time to build your passion where you're probably not making much money from it, but just then working in a cafe the rest of the time you know to to get and and you don't also have to look at um making more and more money to get this number you can also look at reducing your expenses you know like driving an older car um, I'm not trying to think what other ways to reduce your expenses what drive a van oh yeah drive drive your parents car (laughs) um if that's possible Uh, you know there's or because when I did that that's when I looked at where I was spending my money and I was spending it on like supplements food and then I realized I was like god if I actually keep growing this Instagram I might get that sponsored so like that was another kind of motivation so then I was getting my supplements sponsored I was getting my meat from Kerrigan's and everything and then I was like okay that reduces the number I need to make which means I need to work less you know so it's it's kind of just thinking differently around income and careers and like not being afraid to take a step back or, or a step jumping off the career ladder. Cause you know, life is short and that's what I'm like, you could die next week and no one will care what your position was. Yeah, exactly. And that's a very good thing about money because I feel like people are really pressured to have more money, but you can literally survive on nothing. Trust me. Trust me. Siobhan has seen me, go out for dinner, not eat anything, and then go back to the house and eat oats because I wanted to live in ballet, but I also, but so I had to like really cut my expenses. And that was something that I knew that I needed to do to grow my business and my life. So that is something that I did and I loved it. I loved making my oats in my room. It was class. I still went out for dinner. I, I don't think I knew you were doing that. I probably would have like paid for I know dinner. you probably would have, but I, di- I didn't want to say to anyone. Like, you know, I wanted to defend for myself. And like, you don't want to be charity and you don't want people to not ask you, like ask you out knowing that they have to pay for your dinners. So I was just like, I'll just go. I was like, I'm not hungry. I've just that. Like I just said that. Um, so, I know, but like, I know, look at you now. <laughs> I know, but there was times as well. You bought me coffee and stuff. And now, now we're like, we literally have may as well have the same bank account because we shared everything when we lived together. Yeah. Like you paid for one thing, I paid for the next. And like, we were crazy. Yeah. We? we used to like <laughs> just wrestle each other with a Revolut card. I know. So um, it is good. I got a, actually got a thing, like which shop I spent most of my money in this year. And it was Fresh in Grand Canal Dock. Oh my God, I know. I'm so obsessed with Fresh. Oh my God, it's so, so good. I do uh, miss our little Dublin life. I know, me too. I was going to move back to Dublin this week if they, if they told, but it just keeps with ballet. They keep going two weeks, two weeks. And I'm like, if it said three months, I'd be like, right, let's go to Dublin. Like, yeah, it's saying the 25th now, but. but I still think we should go back to Dublin every year for two months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't there. know what I'm doing this year. I can't believe I'm saying this year now, but. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to live in Ireland. For the first of April, year. but. Uh, you what? I definitely want to live in Ireland at least two months every year. So I think yeah, like I really enjoy, I, I, I literally fell in love with Ireland again this summer, like going home in March and that panic. And then just, I loved it. Like I loved, I miss my runs around Dublin. I miss the gym crew and all that. And yeah, we had so much fun in Dublin and we just, I think we just learned a lot about each other and we learned, we just became closer. We became like sisters then, didn't we? And yeah. 
yeah. we also had a lot of fun. We met a lot of new friends. And I think like, I, right, this is a wee bit of a manifest. So I think every single year we come back for like two months. We live in like a nice, beautiful apartment and we like do events. We do events. Oh. We throw a few events, like maybe like, you know, a five day workshop. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if we have five days of content to give people. <laughs> I have. I'm ready for it. I'm ready. I'm so much, I have so much I need to do. So I think that will be something. your event. I'll make your coffee. No, you're going to speak, obviously. Like, <laughs> I'm the one that's a nervous speaker. So you're doing that. Um, so, yeah, but I just want to touch on people find their passion. Like, I think that's first of all, you need to think about your money. I always say do it for free until you get a fee. And I think a lot of people just don't know what, like when you're, tra- when you're at an event or you're trying to coach someone or anything and you're going, so what do you like? You'll never imagine how many people say they don't know. And I think that was me and probably you as well for a long time. I just didn't know, didn't know, but I just kept trying new things until I found it. So at the start, mine was like fitness. And then I realized that it's not fitness. It's just actually helping people be better um why yours was like you know helping people have better relationship with food because your relationship with food as well so you really want to change that and then I just kept growing and I just kept trying new things and reading new books and just doing more scary things and I think that's what you need to do to find your purpose you need to keep doing the thing and you know what see if you You don't like it you go back what yeah I know that's yeah uh, you need to get into the growth mindset you know like constantly learning like I just spend as much as time as I can every day learning as much as I can like I don't know what I'm learning it for but like just learn about different things and it might spark an interest you know like I didn't know I even said I wanted to do a degree in psychology like two years ago without having read any books and then someone said to me like why don't you start reading like you can learn a lot from books so mm. like, right so I started reading all psychology books and it just made me even more interested but I've learned so much in my day-to-day life and my you know my own mindset is so good from li- reading but you know, you, you you don't know what you're going to be interested in unless you're kind of looking, unless you're like constantly learning, listening, talking, networking, um, you know, being that in that growth mindset rather than being closed. Yeah. Um, and what Elon, did you say there? No, I was just about to say Elon Musk said something about, um, he was like, it was going on about college and he was all, every single information that you want is out there for free. College is fun. Yeah. yeah but like, yeah learn absolutely anything you want for free Just all i've got free. is a maths degree and a drinking problem <laughs> oh my god i know tell me about it seriously like but um yeah so that's just what people really wanted to know they want to know how to make passion and you know what i'm gonna finish off with aren't you? it's gonna be the drinking game without the drink oh no how many times have we done this <laughs> Yeah, no, but this one's going to be a little bit different because we have talked about what we like about each other. So we're not going to do that one. So um, the drinking game today is two things you like about yourself and your goal for 2021. Our goal. Um, Two things I like about myself. Um, I like how calm or how content I am in my mind. Mm Mm-hmm and about myself yeah I know this is the hardest question for people but this is what so when people listen to this now they're going to have to do this by the way if you're listening you have to do this and I like want to see your answers um I like how I like how I always surprise myself I like how I try things and and get it like I I, I love how I always surprise myself by doing something I thought was hard and then I get it Mm-hmm. and that's kind of I, I just there's always a pattern like when I try something I, I normally get it so like it kind of encourages me myself to keep trying mm-hmm. in terms of everything like business going for a run lifting a weight you know I've always I think myself yeah so my self-belief I'm like that's what that is that's how we sum that up and goals for 2021 oof, um I want to buy an apartment without a mortgage and like oh! the other thing is that sounds really money driven, but it's I want the reason I'd buy it is to make some people in your my family very happy. happy. And that's all it comes down to my family being happy. Yeah, I actually know the story and it is so selfless and so beautiful. And uh, so that that's kind of making me like I'm like, okay, you know, I'll work a bit harder. But then and then by working harder I know I can help more people as well. So I'm like, it's it's all going very well at the moment. So we're both of us are just living, living in our passion. 
love and life great examples of it right now um, hopefully people to this actually get something from it or not like ooh, what these two mushy lovebirds <laughs> oh my god i know we're like a fucking married couple like but um no like our our relationship and our friendship. we should also publish the podcast that we tried to record but we had to end because we kept fighting no, we'll, not, <laughs> we'll not go to that podcast <laughs> oh my god fun day fun i have day. that on my laptop <laughs> we never never show that <laughs> <laughs> oh, right okay anyway. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening to the Sinead Says podcast. And thank thanks you for having me on. Coming on. And can't wait to end the recording and give a good chat. <laughs> <Okay>. Bye. <laughs>